I want to talk about uh, background writings uh, for a minute. You see, in database engineering, to build a database, uh, we have this concept of documents or tables, graphs, right? But then internally, we really store these as pages. You know? Almost all database systems use the concept of pages, which is a fixed size you know, binary, you know, area envelope, eight kilobytes, 16 kilobytes, 32 kilobytes. And then we store the data that we want in these pages. And those pages are just binary bytes. You know? They go to files as bytes. So if I want to page, page zero, I literally go, so, all right, seek to this file to position number zero. If I want page one, uh, that will become basically page one times whatever. Eight, let's say 8,000 is the, is the page size, times 8,000 plus one, and so on. So, you do a like, simple, you know, mathematical operation to know exactly what page to put. And you read exactly eight kilobytes. That's, that's how it works, right? And all files are stored like that. So you read and write these pages, you know, and for efficiency, we store these pages in what we call the shared buffers. And this shared buffer is in memory and shared, it's called shared because all the processes of the database share this memory for efficiency, right? Because you need either multi-threaded or multi-processes to make your databases perform, otherwise, It'll really suck, right? To have one single process do everything. So now we have this beautiful place in memory with all these pages for all these different tables. Just to, that's the beauty of this. The abstraction of a page is really nice, right? You have one thing and you can deal with that, right? Now, as you write to, to something, you know, we write in memory only. We never write to disk. You might say, oh, about durability. I'll come to that. You see, there is, those pages are really fat. They're juicy. There's a lot of data in them. Imagine if I, every time I update a single row, single column in a row, and we really need to update the whole page for checksum and all that stuff in memory. But we really have to flash the whole page, right? If I want to write it to this, which is really inefficient. You're writing this massive amount of data. So scientists said, all right, we're not gonna write to, it's enough to write in memory, but we're gonna write these changes that we're talking about, that we actually made to something called the wall, which is the read all log. And I talked about it in my, many other videos. And it tracks your changes. It's the transaction log, essentially. What happened, the source of truth is, is done on that transaction log on the wall. It's beautifully maintained. You can use that wall to replay all the changes from day one, if you, if you have all the wall changes. So in case of a crash, you might say, I lost my pages that I wrote in memory, but we have the wall. So you go back to the final last known snapshot, or we call checkpoint, and you replay the wall from that checkpoint, and you're up to date again. So that's a beautiful design. You see, now we end up with pages in memory with changes that is out of sync with this, what is in, in disk. So that's why asynchronously with the OS, well, not the OS, well, the OS does part of it. The database writes this on the background because, all right, let's, 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 yeah. because here's the thing if you don't write at all, these changes to memory, <laughs> to desk, I'm sorry. What will happen is crash recovery will be really slow, right? Because in case of a crash, the final uh, known checkpoint will be so old that startup time will be taken most of the time to just recover, right? To write all these old wall changes that you've made for, for you know, for hours. So that's why you really need also to write this 
you know, changes in disk on this. And this is what is called five minutes later. This is what's called background writing. So there is like a specific process or a thread or threads or processes that just its jobs just take dirty pages or to disk. Dirty pages or to disk. Just, just to make sure that everything is laid is as lay, laid as, as possible. So that's what it is. So background writing is a critical I would say critical. Critical for reca crash recovery. But right, so we need it. It's important to write this as often, but not really, you know, like a life or, or dead situation. We can live without background writing. So you can configure all this stuff, you know. AnuDB gives you certain configuration. It's called the maximum I concurrent IO for those background writers. And it sets that, if I'm not mistaken, to by default 100 uh, IOs, I believe. Yeah, you get 100 writes per second, you know? So you can increase that to 1,000, 20,000, you know? And it will basically allow you to write those faster. You can write the background, you know, changes faster to those. And you might say, this is actually attractive. Let me write those changes as fast as possible. You know, especially with SSD, it will be really fast, right? But there is like a limitation when it comes to that, you know? If you actually started writing things fast, then you are you are accumulating more and more changes. Right? Because you're gonna write those, okay, you, you, there are some certain changes and you wrote them and then more changes come and you get, write it again. So you know you're writing more, right? But then you're accumulating more changes. So you're writing very frequently. And SSD don't like a lot of writes. So it's actually better to delay those writes until uh, you get enough nice, you know, full of changes and then you write them as well, right? Or reduce the number of, in the maximum number of IOs you can do in a second. And this way, it was like, oh, I can only write 100 IOs. So, all right, I'm going to write a few pages. So, while you did write a few pages, and that's fine, because we don't really need to write those anyway. We can still read them from memory. And in case of a crash, I'll take the heads, right? If you really just wrote those, the other dirty pages will have more chance to receive more writes. And that is the power of this, you know? It's a very interesting concept here. Postgres, unfortunately, I don't think has this I.O. configuration, but you can actually delay the P background writer on Postgres. So that's the video I want to make today. Very quick while I was walking my dog. See you in the next one.